Well, hello everybody and a very big welcome to the show. Uh, my name is John King and I'm currently in the World Magic Network studio. I'm joined uh, via a video call uh, with a very, very special guest. His name is Alex. Well, there goes by a lot of names. Uh, his name is uh, Alex uh, William Smith. So I'm now going to put you over uh, to Alex William Smith. Hello, Alex. How are you doing? Hopefully you can hear me. Um, and I'm just going to... Uh, I'm just... Hopefully the viewers can... Uh, it can can hear you okay so um so anyway how you been doing long time no see it's been a been a while like, well thanks to this wonderful uh pandemic and the absence of black hole magic convention um yeah it's been it's been over a year now hasn't it well, person, that is. That's, uh, it's, it's interesting that you use the word plandemic, you know. It's, uh, uh, a lot of folk would disagree with you. Um, we can't, we won't go down that route. Um, well, all I'll, I'll, I'll say on that route is for those that disagree, or those that don't disagree, or whatever. I, I'm not saying I disagree either. I'm not, I'm not saying I disagree. I, I think I, I think you're probably right. You know. Well, I've done a lot of research. In 2019, mm -hmm. um, with a production company called um, Brick in the Wall Films, I, I, I had a mental block then, so I looked to the side of me where I've got the um, theatrical release poster. Brick in the Wall Films, um, myself, made a documentary called Extreme Danger, Extreme Hypnosis. Yep. Subtitled, it's time for the sleepwalking zombies to wake up. And it's an hour and 45 minute long um, semi-biographical, autobiographical film about my life growing up on the circus, um, being on television from an early age, because um, there'd be people watching this who, who have heard of me because of all the nasty shit that gets mentioned on the internet, but don't actually realise that... Um, how do I say this without sounding big -headed? My pedigree in show business... I've been, I'm 46 this year in August. Okay. I started performing at three and a bit on Gandhi's Circus. I was Britain Junkies paid professional circus clown at the time. I have performed non stop since professionally. Yes, I did have to do education and schooling in between, but performing came first. I've been a professional entertainer my entire life, unlike the vast majority of people who slag me off on the internet who haven't got a clue about my background. And interestingly, you mentioned, and I'm going off on one, you mentioned I've used lots of names. Yeah, I have. Over the years, stage names, and some of them can be found on the internet, have included, well, by birth, I'm Alex William Smith. Uh, and Smith, incidentally, is the layperson, or the, 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 Smith actually is the real name of most petrol engrolls, as in the gypsy family. Okay. And I'm genuinely, by family tree related to Walter Smith, aka the King of the Gypsies, um, Walter Petrolangro, who for a period of his life lived in and around Haywood in Lancashire uh, in England, which is where a lot of my family are from. But anyway, that's kind of a side thing. Um, I don't know why I told you, just because my brain goes off on one, given free reign to. The point is, where was I going with that? Yeah, Extreme Danger, Extreme Hypnosis. The documentary we made, it's semi-biographical, but also it looks at what I learned during my life. For example, in circus. Okay. Some of the things that look incredibly dangerous, like they could kill you, are, as long as you do them in the right manner, relatively safe. I'm not saying they're without danger, I'm just saying the perceived danger to the general public it is quite often way out of proportion to the genuine danger. And some of the things that look relatively safe to the general public are actually the ones that cause the most danger to the performer. It's kind of inverted. And I experienced that growing up on the circus. And then I segued into, it's all explained in the documentary, but I, I, I when I was going to normal schools, um, I was getting bullied because I was in the national media um, you know, I was in the national newspapers first when I was about four years old. Um, when my this year uh -huh. got ripped up by a puma. Oh, I, I, I think you. I recall that you've you mentioned that story before. Uh, as in a wild cat puma, people thinking, "You what? What's he on about?" And basically, I was playing hide and seek on the circus, and um, I was playing hide and seek with the lion tamers' sons and some of the other kids off the shore. No member of the public was ever in danger because this was all in the private area uh, and I was encouraged to go and hide underneath one of the trailers 
which is what us showmen call the caravans, the lay people, the trailers. And I went and hid under the one I was encouraged to hide under by um, Alex Lacey, the son of Martin Lacey, the wild cat tamer, anyone who watched Britain's Tiger King uh, shows that um, Ross Kemp did a couple of weeks ago in England, will have seen uh, Alex Lacey at Circus Chrome along with his brother Martin Lacey. Well, they're two of the people I was playing hide and seek with. And I went in under this trailer, except the one I did was the Lion Tamer's caravan. And there was a baby puma chained up. The general public could never have got hurt. I could never have got hurt, short of crawling underneath the trailer and getting to where the baby puma was. And it started playing with me. And um, fortunately, I, I was heard screaming and I was saved in, in, in time that I've got scars all down my back, I've got scars on the back of me, I'm practically deaf in this year. That's why I stick me in convention the whole book directly at people's lips, because I'm, I'm mainly lip read, because even my hearing in this has gone, gone dicky. So, yeah, it was extreme danger we were talking about, the documentary. Yeah, yeah I've, I've actually, I bought it on Amazon. Um, can you tell the people that are watching uh, where they can actually... Well, they don't need to buy it anymore. This is not an advert. It was originally on sale on Amazon Prime and um, Vimeo On Demand and through some other outlets. And then th that was in late 2019. And it's partly about my life, but also we have David Icke's son, Gareth Icke, the musician on there. Um, sharing about corruption and, um, and, and conspiracy in the music industry. Um, we've got um, a medical doctor, uh, a GP, born in England, but now living uh, in New Zealand, called Dr. Robin Kelly, who um, talks about the dangers of 5G. And there'll be people watching this going, Woo! Tim Foyle Hart, no job. Hey, watch what Dr. Robin Kelly has to say. He's a medical GP. He's not something that for an art wearing person watch the documentary. You don't have to agree with it. In fact, the fact is we say throughout the documentary, don't believe a single word of this without going and doing your own independent research. Um, simple as, you should always, nobody should ever force any belief um, down your neck. Otherwise it just becomes as bad as being a Jehovah's Witness which is just um, what's out of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Sorry about that. Um, I'm not, I couldn't care less. Um, if you want to believe in a magical, um, the magic man did it, then so be it. Um, but yeah, the, we, we, when this uh, pandemic started, um, sorry, when this um, terrible thing hit the world, that um, at the same time did a great magic trick of making all the flu cases disappear in England. So roughly the same ratio. I, you know, it's, 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 it's bizarre that, isn't it? You know, for, for the people watching, you know, in 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 a weird, you know, that nobody seems to have flu anymore, you know? Strange. Uh. Anyway, um, and isn't it weird that if you go and type into Google uh, World Bank funding for the CO and you know how to spell the rest of it, ending in ID. We say that because automatic recognition things on YouTube delete videos that say the word. All right. Um, if you put that in, um, World Bank funding for the C word until 20... It's either 2023 or 2025. I have a mental block, but I think I'm, it's I'm, I'm, sure, I'm, right. I'm sure it's 2025. You, I've, I've seen the document. Um, that, yeah, I'm sure yeah. you sent me it. Um, is, that the one that you, is that the one that you sent me earlier on? It's publicly, it's, anyone can find that. That is the World Bank that funds governments around the world. It's not a conspiracy, it's there hidden in plain sight. Just as is if, um, the funding for what they're calling the COVID project until early 2023 or 2025. I'm, the I'm, I'm is, sure the document is 2025, Alex. Uh, um, it's I, not I, ending I, anytime soon. There you go, I've said it. It's not ending anytime soon. Uh, in the same way, if you type in Mindspace, M-I-N-D space, all as one word, PDF, government, you will find a website with that and it, it's teaching, it's a government, UK government produced document, teaching how to socially engineer through psychological operations, psychological warfare, brainwashing, call it what you will, techniques, the mass populace into doing what the government want. Mm -hmm. All I will say is look at them and then go onto my website, magicalguru.com, and click on where it says extreme danger, extreme hypnosis, because when all this kicked off, uh, myself and a production company had a meeting, and we decided collectively, I agreed to not take any more money out of the project, they agreed not to take any more money out of the project, and we took it off sale, 
and released it free on Vimeo, on YouTube, and it's also available to people who are subscribed to David Icke's iconic TV streaming channel. Uh, it's one of the featured documentaries on there. And we're giving it away free mm -hmm. because um, what it covers, although it's my life, largely based in my life, and stories of how I've manipulated the media in the past and then how the media screwed me over, and my ongoing battle to expose the media and their dishonesty lies and illegal actions that I'm involved in and have been for a couple of decades. Along the way, this interrelates into every aspect of life and affects every human being on this planet because the media control the narrative and the way that people react. And we're giving it away free now and you don't have to believe it. Go and watch it more and bear in mind, it, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's my truth, it's my life. I've lived through it. Ah, yeah. Well, as I say, I've, I've actually I, I bought it. I've, I've just it's, it's been in my sort of massive list of sort of watch later things. You know, I've got the. Uh, it's something that I really should should watch, and I would recommend. You know, to I did watch the start of it, but then I, I'm sure I got distracted, and uh, uh, and uh, you know what I'm like. I'm I always. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got like a, a watch list that's like uh, sorry a watch later list that's like a a mile long. You know. Always, pla always, 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 always plan to watch these things. But, but, but the thing is, regardless if, I mean, as I say, I mean, people know me. They think I'm a conspiracy theorist, you know, then for for, for numerous different things, you know. Uh, and uh, the thing is, regardless if you believe it to be a conspiracy or not, it is affecting the livelihoods of magicians um, and, and ordinary people all over the world. But yeah. talking about magicians in particular, because obviously that, that's where we are, um, it, it's it must be really really hard for a lot of people to kind of can get by. I'm, I'm sure that a lot of magicians, are, and and I do have a lot of magician friends um, that I have spoken with, and a lot of them are you know taking on normal jobs. Uh, they're they're okay. Judging from the past twelve months, well, I'm a bit over that now. I mean, because yeah, obviously at the start of twenty um, twenty. Suddenly, overnight, I lost uh, six figures, um, as in hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of work overnight. Boom, gone. Live training seminars, out the window. Trips overseas for doing television projects, out the window. Live theatre shows in Europe, out the bloody window. Gone. Corporate events that, uh, you know, I do. Out, out, lots of other people have it. Absolutely bloody abysmal. And I can honestly say that a year on, um, I have I have I have less than ten thousand pounds in the bank of savings now. I think a lot of people are going to be in the same the same boat, or uh, and you know, I'm, I, as I say, I'm... The, the right side is unfortunate. I don't have a mortgage or anything like that. Before I was thirty years of age, forty six this August. Um, so, you know, nearly 17 years ago now, I bought outright for cash my own property. And by that, I mean, because I was such an egotistical twat at that age, and people would probably say I still am, but I'm not saying it for that purpose. The point is, I'd set myself a goal when I was young, that before I was 30, I would buy my own home outright for cash. Mm -hmm. And it was fast approaching my 30th birthday, and I didn't have enough cash there. I'd have had to have sold stuff to get cash. I had assets. Having assets, the net worth is very different than having available cash liquid funds. Yeah. Very, very different. Okay. And a lot of people who you perceive as being millionaires do not have a million pound cash in the bank. They'd have to sell their cars and some of the properties to get hold of cash. They're often, you know, it's not as it appears uh, quite often. So I did sell the rights, the copyrights, and a lot of my seminars, hypnosis and mind reading seminars that I had that were being sold on eBay and Amazon and stuff to the person I was in business with. I sold my half of the rights to them to raise the money to go and buy my own property outright for cash. And then because it made me feel good, yeah, you know, I look back and think, what an egotistical dickhead. I drew it all out of the bank in um, 20 pound notes and put it in a briefcase and went and <laughs> walked in and went, I've come to buy this property at the time I was renting, I, I, I've come to buy this property, open a briefcase, it's their cash, and they nearly shit themselves. They, 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 they emptied everyone out of the um, 
office and locked up because they had to get security to come and count it. But I ultimately did buy my own property I write for cash. People have said on the internet that's bollocks, that's why on facebook.com forward slash Alex the Hypnotist, which is a public profile, you can go in the photo albums and in one of them, uh, I forget which, it's the one with all my uh, hypnosis and mind therapy diplomas in that uh, I've earned over the years and the awards that I've been given. Um, is the deeds to the property that I bought outright before I was 30 to prove that I actually did. And then people slag that off. This is magic, such a jealous industry. It knows it's just as bad. And they slag that off saying, well, that might be true. But um, uh, that was a, um, you know, it's it's a flat in a, um, a block called Smackhead Towers. Where they get that from, God only knows. You don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to defend yourself about the properties yeah. you're buying. Who gives a fuck? No, no, I'm just saying because it's fucking, it's fucking mental. It's, it's an illustration. I've just been watching the Fred Presto interview. I, I started like, watching that. Was that the Craig Petty one? Yeah. Absolutely oh. pure gold. Anyone in this magic uh, business should watch it. Absolutely, absolutely pure gold. I've I've started watch, watching it, and I, I, for for those of you that are watching, I would recommend Craig Petty's channel. He's he's putting out a lot of really really good content every single day, and uh, of course, I think content, it's a bit. It's a bit of, interview, you know, it's it's way off the raptor scale, and Tay was talking about what a bitchy, uh, jealous, vindictive. Uh, Magicians um, can be. Um, I, that, 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 that's very you know. true. You know, I mean, I've, I've experienced that kind of thing, you know, firsthand as well. You know, it's it's uh, you know when you start to kind of uh, um, kind of become successful in in, in a field, uh, you, the professional kind of jealousy kind of creeps in. I've lost a lot of friends through that. People who you know initially helped me kind of get to where. You know, you know, kind of helped increase my skill set and stuff like that. As soon as I started working and and doing well, they kind of turn their their back on you and they kind of distance themselves from you. So I've experienced that as well, you know, and uh, they kind of um, so yeah, professional jealousy is a is a, is, a, is a is a weird thing to deal with, you know. Sometimes it can be people who should know better, just vindictiveness for the sake of it. I mean, the magic circle, long story cut very short, because if people type into Google Jonathan Royal versus the magic circle, and then the words the jerk, J-E-R-X, you'll get the page on the jerk's blog where he goes into the whole debacle where I was booked to lecture at the magic circle in London. And a couple of weeks, a few weeks before the date of said event, um, Paul Zenon encouraged a number of people to become very vocal and go, what are you doing letting that person appear as a lecturer at the Magic Circle? Um, we'll boycott the Magic Circle. We won't show up that night. And rather than taking into account all the people who never show up at the Magic Circle normally, who were going to travel from all over the country to come and see me, um, they, 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 um, they, I ultimately ended up getting cancelled and getting a letter where they track, where they go, we want to make it clear it wasn't due to what Paul then on said on the internet. Uh, well, decide for yourself on the jerk.com. It, it, it probably wasn't solely down to um, Paul Zenon. It was no doubt actually more down to the comments that were stalked by somebody uh, about the fact. Why should we have somebody here who's got a book out called Hypnotism and Sex, How to Get Laid 365 Times a Year? That's degrading to women. It's encouraging men to abuse women. Well, if they actually read the advert for said thing on Amazon, they would know that that's a catchy title to create attention, interest, desire, and action. It's called marketing. And yes, on television and radio shows around the world, on literally hundreds of them over the decades, I played the part of the evil Svengali hypnotist who hypnotizes women to believe he's their fa favorite film star to get them into bed. Uh, I'll, if I'll... I'd done that, I'd be in prison. <laughs> it's bullshit. It's politicking. It's word looking. It's why I was able to, you know, it's why. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm laughing, but the 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 the, the, the thing is, uh, I've had very similar things ha happen with me uh, years ago. I, f I found a video on the internet. It was back in 2002, 
And it was a, it was guys. It was a thing called Duty Humor. I don't think it exists anymore. It's an American. It was an American. Uh, two seconds. It was an American uh, comedy company. I think they put on shows and stuff like that. But they also made sketches. And what happened was one of the sketches they made was a trip to um, a theme park called Auschwitzland. Okay, uh, <laughs> right. And uh, it was it was a comedy sketch thing where wherever it was. And I took the screenshot of that and said, "This is me. I'm a magician. I'm going to go into primary schools dressed as Hitler." People thought it was real. To this day, people don't speak to me because they think I'm a I'm a Holocaust denying Hitler costume wearing children's magician. It's you know it's it's, it's, it's fucked up, <laughs> you know. I'm, I'm trying to look at the thing. You know, I am going to admit on this interview that there are some things I've done in my career that I regret in certain respects and contexts. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason I, I, I regret that is too. Hindsight, with hindsight, um, if I'd have known the backlash that could cause literally decades down the line and the problems that could still raise their ugly head, then with foresight, I wouldn't have done them. But unfortunately, when you were young, and I was, for the example I'm going to give, I was, it's 1994, the start of, so 80, 85, 90, 91, 92, 93, I, just, I was just 18. I was incredibly um, ambitious, I'd had a lot of worldwide television appearances, been featured in international media. I was earning really, really above average. Um, and I got out of control living. I got, you know, I was, for a period of that time, I was regularly hanging out with string fellows in London, um, uh-huh. going to things like the Sunday Sport Pay Free Girl of the Year Awards. and. Entertain that. It was just a weird, surreal time where I got carried away and would do anything for television or media publicity because that ultimately ended up to me carrying on getting high paid gigs at the time. What I didn't realise at the time is that you can't take it too far. Yes, I was playing a character of this evil Svengali um, hypnotist psychic entertainer, magician, whatnot, because I, I was still doing all the areas, but it was mainly hypnosis. Um, although I did magic in my hypnosis show, incidentally, I'd combine it, so I'd tell somebody when they wake up, for example, that they will believe they can see their jacket on fire and they can see the flames and they've got to do whatever they can to put it out. But from the audience's point of view, I was putting a cigarette, I was genuinely putting a cigarette in the jacket, but I was doing the cigarette in jacket trick, that all magicians know, yeah. using a certain magical device. But the hypnotised individual believed that they could see flames coming from the jacket that weren't there, and then they'd run out and get like pints and chuck them over their own jacket to put out the flames. So it combined magic with hypnosis. I was I was actually doing that in the early nineties. I was arguably the first to do such things. Anyway, <laughs> enough flagging. The point being that I, I I took it way too far. Um, it wouldn't have been way too far if it had just been on a late night Channel 4 show, but it wasn't. It was a current affairs programme for the BBC that was going out at 7.30 at night, and I apparently woke up a lady on stage thinking she had just been raped, and that the hypnotist um, was the rapist and was stood there naked and she'd do to him whatever she wanted. Now, obviously, off microphone that you didn't hear, I whispered, you'll snap the carrot, because I held a big carrot between my legs, as though that was the male member. So when you think there's a big parrot there, when you think about that, to anyone who was there alive, obviously this is visually a piss take gag. You say it verbally, what I've just said, and it sounds really, really bad. So if you were there in reality, she comes round, looks a bit shocked, and snaps the carrot. Well, they don't show the snapping carrot bit on the BBC, do they? Uh-huh. They just play me saying, in a few moments' time when you're awakened, you'll think you've just been raped. Totally out of context. Uh-huh. Now, I'm not saying it was immensely funny in context. I'm just saying that in context with the carrot snapping, it wouldn't have caused the long-term problems it did. Uh-huh. Um, because people would have understood, well, clearly with a the carrot there, getting, the, her snapping the carrot, she clearly doesn't really think she's been raped because you wouldn't just snap the carrot between the legs. You'd be really emotional, crying, run off or punch them or pick up a chair. and You, you, you know, it, it, 
Mm-hmm. It, be more it, but I know what you mean edit out of context. I mean, one one of the things is, and, and I can kind of relate. No, it is. She wasn't even hypnotized. <laughs> she was from TV, and I thought, you know, I would never put anyone through something like that under hypnosis. So I paid an actress to play the part. <laughs> there wasn't actually anyone hypnotized. Mm. I pay, I, I, as is the same as uh, the infamous. Uh, brought out on the dark side of stage hypnosis, the sex tape of me hypnotizing, uh, apparently having sex with someone who thinks I'm a film star. Mm -hmm. There is what looks like a a porno video, yeah? Mm -hmm. Um, I actually wasn't having sex with her, it was simulated. Mm -hmm. And it was a professional glamour model. And that is why the story was broken by the Sunday Sport and Daily Sport newspaper, coincidentally. You know? Mm -hmm. People go, why did you do that? And, you know, looking back, why did I do that? I don't know. You know, some... Oh, sorry. So I regret it in that regard, and it keeps getting brought up, and people go, oh, he's a bastard, he's done all these things, Mr. You know what? By the same token, it's that kind of stuff that means that when a television producer was making a show in, say, Sweden, in randomly, let's say, end of 2018 and they wanted a hypnotist who had been massively controversial in the media around the world because that would tie in with the storyline narrative of the TV show they were making they went and searched for controversial outrageous hypnotists Mm -hmm. and they very quickly discovered that to fully fulfil that criteria uh, for the project they wanted there was only one choice well, so, and that got me a very high paying TV series, well, three part series. That, um, I mean, so, this nonsense, people can slag me out. One of the biggest slagging outs I ever got was on, um, well, not biggest slagging outs, but fastest, was on Magicians of Facebook group, which I'm barred from. Who gives a shit? Because um, they barred me apparently because I advertise too much. I don't. Do you think I have to spend all my time posting in groups? The software that will join Facebook groups for you. Uh, Alex, 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 beware what you're saying. This this is a, a, it's been shared on magicians of Facebook. I don't care. (laughs) If you think my life is that um, sad that I've got to spend time posting adverts in Facebook groups manually, no. Uh, The software you can get that will join Facebook groups for you and then post your adverts. You just write it once and post it out. And that's, I I make, I I, I don't apologise for that, you know what? That is what is paying for my daughter's education at grammar school. And, um... Yeah, that's cool. I, mean, I don't have to worry. But let's, let's just say, yes, my savings have gone down during the pandemic. I've got less than 10 grand in the bank now. But, um... Fortunately, I was in a position where, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, it hasn't really affected me that much other than draining my savings so I could carry on living the same lifestyle as much as was legally allowed within the restrictions we have. And I'm not saying that to brag, because if I never worked again, my savings had run out, but as long as we get relatively back to normal in the real world, if I never worked again, what the right side is over the past 12 months, if I've concentrated more on my um, virtual business, I... Can you tell us a little bit more about your virtual business? Yeah, the, 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 you know, I've got literally hundreds of self-help products out there to the general public. I've got hundreds of stage hypnosis, street hypnosis training products out, magic mentalism training products out. I mean, I've got all the, I think I've got nearly 200 products out by Murphy's Magic Supplies. Plus I've got all my own websites. I earn more now while I'm asleep at night, wake up in the morning, money in my PayPal accounts or royalties coming off on Amazon from my 30 odd books that are on world sale and stuff than a lot of entertainers do going out working their ass off gigging when things get back to normal. So I'm very lucky, but that's taken a lot of work. It's not an overnight thing. You, know? oh, yeah, I've, 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 you gave me a disc years ago or something, like that, and um, it's full of stuff. So it's mental. You know, the, the amount of work that you've put in to... to, to it's badly organised, <laughs> but, 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 but uh, there's a lot of stuff, you know, a real lot of a lot of stuff. Um, and uh, as I say, for those who are interested in learning uh, hypnosis, Alex here really is the guy to uh, to go to. You know, it was uh, he was one of the the um, guys who who I learned hypnosis from, and also guys like Chris Doc Strange and uh, a few other guys um, that I learned 
the hypnotist hypnotism from. So if you are watching this and you are a magician, you are looking to get any hypnotist, or even if you're not, I just want to get any hypnotism, then yeah. check out the uh, transparency template. Um, or unless you've got something newer than that, have you got a newer? Well, no, there's tons of new stuff, but the transparency templates, the, the key thing, when it comes to health and safety, the duty of care, looking after your people, uh, and performing legally and lawfully, which the vast majority of forces out there don't cover. And the, the so-called, for what for a period of time, what was the biggest seller to magicians, was Reality is Plastic by Anthony Jackwin, which is, which, which if you want to learn how to put somebody in a potentially dangerous psychological situation, whilst breaking the law, if you're doing it in England or quite a lot of other places in the world, and that's what you should be reading. But if you actually want to do things legally, lawfully, ethically, and above all else, safely, so you've no chance of causing psychological harm or damage in the short or long term to the participants, then do not think reading reality is plastic makes you a safe, legal, ethical hypnotist. It won't. Neither will be watching any of the DVDs by the same person put out, and I, to my eternal shame, my name is on the credits of the Manchurian, uh, Manchurian approach DVD from Anthony Jackwin. Okay. Uh, he used an idea of mine, a hypnotic coin bending routine. Elements of that were used in it, and I, I gave my permission before seeing the product that was brought out. And I saw the product that was brought out showing footage of people stood on the pavements, hypnotizing people that if they'd suddenly fallen to the floor, which they could have done in the way it had been done incorrectly, they could have fallen into the road and got killed. Completely unethical, unsafe, ridiculous. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, I mean, all I'm going to say about hypnosis, the final thing I'll say is this, and it sounds like it's just big heading, but it's a guaranteed proven fact that I have taught more people around the world who are currently performing on five-star cruise ships, filling five-star theatre venues, appearing on television shows, and working at you know high class corporate events than any other stage hypnosis trainer in the world today. And the same applies to hypnotherapy. There's more people I've taught who are famous named television life coaches, um, television weight loss experts, and stuff around the world who I originally taught or helped. They learned elsewhere, they came to me, and I actually coached them in their career. Um, it doesn't take a lot of searching. My, public relations company used to be called KMA Public Relations, the one that I sell, which stuff for Kiss My Ass. And the logo looked like someone kissing someone's ass. Well, that company, <laughs> KMA Public Relations, if you tap that into Google, along with the names of certain television celebrity life coaches and certain television hypnotists, you'll find press releases come up that show that a certain person got them their television breaks and stuff in a big, big way. That's cool, that's cool. Well, as I say, it's... Uh... It's, uh, it's weird. I mean, television seems to be kind of on its way out and, uh, you know, things like Twitch and YouTube and TikTok and stuff like that seems to be the kind of new way of kind of... Uh, things, things, things are moving, uh, to the, to which well, there's going to be certain underlying rules that still apply. I've made some monumental errors over the years. Yes, I've done hundreds of TV shows around the world. Yes, I've had my own six-part European comedy magic, hypnosis, television series. You can see it on magicalguru.com on the Life in the Bus Lane page. You'll even see me in drag play my own twin sister, Esmeralda, the world's only female stage hypnotist. But it's a variety show sitcom. It was way ahead of its time, and now it looks dated 20-odd uh, years on. But at the time, it was way ahead of its time. And I, I relate this to you, actually. Can you, some of you learn the hard way. I wish I, I'd, I, I wish I'd known certain things TV-wise. I've been on TV shows galore as a guest. But in August, well, I've actually got what they call a treatment. A treatment is what you might call a proposal. But in the television world, they call it a treatment. This is your outline, your idea for a television show or series. They call it a treatment. I put together a treatment for various TV shows, and I've been sending them in year after year, some magic-related, some hypnosis-related, and oddly enough, one of the treatments I came up with as a side story was called Hypnotism and Sex. And it was basically going to be like bringing them up to life. The stuff we talked about before in the evil hypnotist character. But I was going to hypnotize people to reveal their deepest, darkest sexual fantasies. And one of the companies, I sent this to Channel 4. I sent this out to numerous independent production companies. 
Long story cut short, a number of years, well, uh, a couple of years later, a show called Hypnosax, made by Objective Productions, which was Darren Brown, the company that made the Darren Brown shows originally, came on TV and it was hypnotising people to reveal their actual fantasies. Um, I'm not saying Objective ripped off my idea, because Channel 4 had been sent it as well. Um, but that's when I first learned about how to copyright things first. That was a valuable learning lesson. And then, um, anyway, I've been sending treatments in all the years. One of them, a uh, treatment I came up with was, uh, it was going to be called Hypnotorious, after one of my uh, domain names, because hypno as in hypnotist, notorious words together, hypnotorious, giving that evil image again. And it was all going to be hypnosis on the streets the first ever UK-based street hypnosis time show. Mm -hmm. And working with, um, I've forgotten which channel it was now. I've actually forgotten the name of the channel, but that's parts in, in material. Then we, 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 we made a, 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 a kind of working pilot, which rather than being an hour long show, was like a 15 minute proof of concept, uh -huh. in my in layman's terms, for them to get funding with. And ultimately they got the funding and then I was cut out of the equation. Mm -hmm. And rather than Hypnotorious, starring Jonathan Royal, appearing a show called Street Hypnosis on the same channel with Peter Powers appeared, and one or two of the routines on that looked remarkably familiar to what I proposed in meetings with the production company. That's when I learned that copyright infringement cases are incredibly expensive and unless you have got as much available monetary funds as the person you're going to try to sue um you're on you're, you're most of the time on a losing battle because when it comes to copyright infringement cases even with the best lawyers and most money sadly more often than not will win even if it's on a technicality so anyway, jumping forward yeah. to well, 2001. Uh, all right, well, 2001. But, but before you change the topic, I just want to talk a couple of things about television shows. Uh, well, just, just television be, is okay, so hold, hold, hold that thought as we just finished right. as we just finished this because there's a couple of things I want to talk about um, mm -hmm. regarding that. I mean, I uh, I'm just going to bring the camera over to you so, so the viewers are seeing me uh, full screen. Um, I've um, I've never been on television, well, unless I've been in the crowd in a football match or something like that, you know, or in the background or something like that. I've never actually been on television and I've and I've no intention of actually being on television, largely because I have a fear of things being edited out of context. Um, and you've just said you've had that, ex that experience, you know, there with things being edited out of context. Um, now, we've actually made a lot of videos ourselves over the years, you know, things like uh, the World Imagine Network shows and, and, and things like that. And following on from this show just now, when we end this interview uh, in a few minutes' time, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play one of our most recent videos for you. It's called the World Magic Championships, um, which I'm sure Alex will remember quite fondly. It was a, it was a, one of our, it's actually one of my favourite videos that we've ever done. Um, uh, and I actually watched it uh, recently. Um, it was it was done in over November, December, and January of this year. And the World Magic Championships essentially was um, it was a kind of spoof World Magic Championship award show. And uh, we seem to be dropping frames. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Let me just check what's going on here. Um, It seems we had a wee internet outage or something. Is it? Oh, we're dropping frames for some reason. I'm just going to uh, reduce the bit rate of the stream just to see if we can compensate that. So we'll say 2500. I'm not quite sure why we're having a internet connection difficulties. Hopefully that's, this should kind of bring it back up to speed. So anyway, um, we did this World Magic Championship uh, award show. It was one of my favourite videos uh, me and Alex and uh, a few other people ha have been involved in 
and it's quite a complex video because all the sketches kind of relate to one another. It's telling the story of this award show, and Alex has a couple of sketches in it. There's Drew McAdams got a couple of sketches in it. Uh, there's even appearances from Carl DeRome, Old Drab, and Michael Samuels. And it's got a sort of twist end and things like that. Um, I'll not spoil it for those that haven't already seen it, but we'll, we'll, we'll have that coming up just shortly following this interview. Um, so that's the, the, the World Magic Championships video that's coming up following this. So anyway, moving, moving on from that, um, uh, you, you, can, you can resume your thought. Uh, yeah. me, meanwhile, well, sure Alex, Danny Green. I, actually, Alex, while she, resume, while she resume your thought, I'll let you be the host for a second. Meanwhile, I'm going to go and refill my coffee and okay. I'll be back in a couple of seconds so you can entertain the viewer. <laughs> right, yeah. okay. So yeah, I was going to finish up TV and I could tell you bloody hours of stories, but Danny Greenstone, another learning uh, uh, incident was early, well, towards the end of July, start of August 2001. Danny Greenstone was the executive um, commissioning editor, uh, commissioning producer for entertainment shows for Channel 5. And I got a treatment together, or as you may call it, a, a concept for a TV show, but they call it treatment TV circles, for a show, a bizarre, surreal, um, variety show sitcom. So, like, it would be like street magic, street hypnosis happening in public places, but with a, a storyline running through each of the episodes, me playing my own system, Esmeralda. Uh, in drag, the world's only female stage hypnotist, and all these weird storylines. This is what ultimately came to be known as Life in the Bus Lane, and if you go on MagicalGuru.com, click on the Life in the Bus Lane page, you can see the six half hour episodes and the pilot show that were filmed in um, around August 2001 in Amsterdam, and which have been shown in the odd place. Uh, arse end of the universe where probably about you know just a few thousand people live at best <laughs> that's a ridiculous thing i got the concept to danny greenstone at channel five and he wrote back to me and said love it definitely de basically it's as close to a contract uh in a letter as it could be basically said yeah love to commission this as a six-part series for channel five for the youth late night entertainment um, sector. <clears throat> but can you give me a kind of proof of concept um, mini pilot? So not a full pilot show, not a full half hour, just like a, a proof of concept. I went, not a problem. He said, I want it within a month because that's the scheduling I'm working towards. And I'll be, you know, the budget budgeting starts again. I think it was September time or whatever. So I went away and I was going to employ uh, some cinematographers to film a blood proof of concept because it was basically in the bag. I had it in black and white that Danny Greenstone wanted a six part series for Channel 5 youth uh, latest night, the, the, the kind of time that they would have bought Jerry Sadovitz's show on when they did on Channel 5 to that target market. Um, but as I'm approaching companies, one of them, Mudlark Films, in Bray, Windsor, London, Bray Film Studios, um, expressed an interest. They were wanting to make a show of a similar nature. And they were like, well, we could kill two birds with one stone. I showed them this letter from Danny Greenstone, uh, Channel 5, and they said, this is practically a written contract. It says, give him the proof of concept, as long as it looks like what you've told him, and it's that surreal, that wacky, that out there, um, he'll sign off and give us the money for six half hour episodes. And between us, we went, well, you were going to make something, you've already put some funding there, why don't we just go and do it? And we ended up in a matter of a couple of weeks out in Amsterdam. We'd already gone out across once for a few days doing the racket reconnaissance, finding venues that will let us film, getting the legal permissions and all that. But then we went back and we arrived and went to bed one night and then we had five full days and nights and then we came home. So we're kind of, it's a week from leaving England to getting home, but only five actual full days from morning to night to filming. And we I, think, I think I've seen that show. I think, I think you posted that on World Magic Network before. And bits of it, but it's all on magicalguru.com now for free. 
we were there and we've been advised by people in the television industry that the idea of filming anything more than one half hour episode in a week ridiculous can't be done don't do it and we ultimately filmed uh practically from 9 a.m in the morning to probably 2 3 a.m the following morning every day for um five days and that was a three camera professional shoot with three cameramen sound guys directors um runners there was a there was a crew of about eight nine people as well as me the talent as they call it and we made this and after all the post production and editing and stuff took it to danny greenstone channel five we went into the meeting and went hi danny um we're here before the deadline you said you know end of august but we've got we haven't edited the full six half hour episode by then but we had what could be called a pilot proof of concept watch that he, 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 he laughed his head off he said some people won't get it it's marmite television some are going to get it some aren't some of them think you're incredibly crap at magic others are going to realize this is so firmly tongue-in-cheek that it's <laughs> it's been uh, but he loved it he's practically getting the checkbook out and then we say so glad you liked it because we've nearly finished editing the full six half hour episodes his jaw dropped to the table and he looked like a member of his family had died and we could feel the energy in the room drain out and thought what's wrong he just said he loves it but he said you made it I'm like yeah he said I, 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 I can't go any further then i'm gonna have to refer you to my colleague i'm the commissioning person i commission things to be made from proof of concept um pilots and treatments mm -hmm. and give the money for the men to hire in crew that we approve but yeah we would have approved you in the process but the point is the certain processes and um we finished it it's a different department who buy in ready-made programs i can't i can put you on to the person mm -hmm. and recommend it so we ended up with a meeting with somebody else that ultimately meant that person didn't get it they didn't get the show and they, they, they just they fell into the it's too tongue-in-cheek we don't get it mm -hmm. whereas danny loved it and through the ambition of wanting to make the show and having a having a company there that was prepared to do the same thing mm -hmm. we went from basically what was practically a guaranteed contract to channel five not wanting to buy it because it was a different department oh, that's, that, that, that's a shame i, I, I guess I mean, the I mean... which is the television part of Cannes tv festival mm -hmm. and we got offered at mipcon we got offered a million pounds for the worldwide distribution rights. And I, my contract with the production company to put this into um, perspective was that I had a percentage in writing. So I didn't get paid anything up front. I had my travel expenses and expenses to eat and all that while we filmed. But I, when they got money in, I was gonna get um, something like 22.8% the top of my head i've still got the document somewhere so a million quid in realism would have meant about two hundred and twenty eight thousand pounds to me mm -hmm. not uh well a little bit life affecting but not life-changing not massively life-changing not you're not going to retire on it mm -hmm. well it was never about that you know it, it was if when you're on telly a lot it does mean that you get more show bookings it does mean that you sell more product it does mean that you can charge more fees that's where you make your money from really not the tv stuff unless you produce your own shows which for example mm -hmm. darren does now with his own vaudeville uh tv production company that's uh -huh. why it's all objective um then you make more of the money if you're just a talent you don't make as much money but you make it from the live stuff and your back-end sales and, uh, and whatnot but the lion's share was out by the production company obviously they have shares to give out to the cameramen and stuff that's why we were able to get them to film so many hours mm -hmm. they weren't just on trade union rates where we're going to stick to what the trade union said it's in their interest to get it done because when it's sold they get much more they were well looked after they were anyway the people who ended up getting no real money out of it was me and the production company 
because they turned down this offer because they figured they could make a lot more than that by selling it to the territories around the world, different geographic areas, but we call it territories in TV, different territories around the world uh, individually. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for example, the Channel 4 for six half hour variety show, sitcom type shows, they should realistically at that time period have been able to get at least 50, bare minimum of 50 grand per show, right? Okay. Well, they thought if you sold it to different countries around the world, they could have made way more than a million. They turned down the offer. Unfortunately, the only offers we got after that was like, I forget what it was called, but it was something like, because he's sad at the arse end of the universe with about, you know, five and a half thousand occupants that would happily pay us something like £20,000 for the licensing rights. And it was a complete comedy of errors. It did get shown some places in the middle of nowhere. It's now available for free on my website. The point is, you, can, you learn a lot in this industry the hard way. If there is a way of going to people who've done it before, whether you like them personally or not, it's freaking irrelevant. You know, you might not personally, God knows why you wouldn't, but you might not personally like Faye Presto. I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you're, if you're, uh, if you're mentally mental defective with prejudice, then up yours. But for the context of this, even if you didn't like Faye, You've really got to go and watch that interview that Craig Petty did recently. Um, because you can learn so much from it. Not just about how to be a better close-up performer, but how to be a better stage performer. How to be more successful in the business night moment. You just you should watch it. And, um, you mm -hmm. know, in hate my guts. But I've got a lot of experiences that other people haven't yet had. That doesn't make me better than other people. It just means that I got my ass and did things. Um, you know, I've been asked in the past, how have you ended up on hundreds of TV shows around the world? Well, through getting outrageous publicity, through being different, through, for example, I got on ITV's primetime morning show this morning, and following that, it got covered by the National so News. Is that the belly button thing with the Philip yep. Schofield? and Doing psychic belly button reading of celebrities. And all the magicians of Facebook group, uh, bloody hell, there were comments galore. When I got off air, I saw them and they were going, he's a bastard, he's claiming to be a genuine psychic. At no point in that show do I say that I'm a genuine psychic. I say that I get energies off putting my finger in people's belly buttons. It's quite, anyone with a brain cell can see I am taking the piss. And anyone who goes on my website, my website said the same thing when I did that. It was my website um, that this morning bought me from. It clearly says on the psychic page of my website that I reproduce the feats of alleged genuine psychics using trickery and stuff. Mm. <laughs> Can't be any clearer. I'm taking the piss. Clearly, I've got my... T oh, oh, I'm the evil Beelzebub because I'm being called reading on TV. No, you know what I want? <laughs> I was working when all those people who were criticising weren't. I was featured on the primetime show when they weren't. It was a result of it. I got a load of corporate shows out of it, believe it or not, where the organisations thought it'd be hilarious for me to read the managing director's belly button at the reward ceremony. Hey, it, it's a gimmick, and if it works, it works. You know, you know, you've got to have yeah. something that, that that's uh, that appeals to people, and you know, and, and if, it, it, if it makes if it makes good TV. On on a different topic, oh, sorry, on a different yeah. on a different topic. Um, I'll I'll explain to to the people that are um, watching this. Not like ten minutes because I've got to go then to the dentist. No, no worries. I'll get this wee thought out, and then what we'll do is we'll we'll cue the World Magic Champion. Uh, to uh, the, the World Magic Championships uh, show for the for the people that are watching. So I want to actually talk. Uh, I've, I've lost my train of thought. What was I going to mention? Ah, you you that was your fault, Alex. <laughs> you spoke when I was trying I'm to. Think. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, which is too many magicians. Oh, I remembered. I remembered. I remembered. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Okay. Fin finish what you're saying. I remember what I was going to say. Too many magicians copy all the magicians. Too many times copy all the entertainers. You've got to get yourself a gimmick. Okay. You've got to do something different. You can do the same tricks, but do them differently. Use a different pattern. Use a different routine. Be yourself. Don't be, you know, the way I dress for a corporate show, most magicians out there who give advice to other magicians will say you would never get booked to do 
uh, a magic show or any type of show dressing the way I do for most corporate shows. You know what? I can dress how the freaking hell I want when I do corporate shows because they are booking Jonathan Royal. They're not booking a magician or a hypnotist or a psychic entertainer. They're booking Jonathan Royal, the outrageous, outspoken, naughty but nice. Could have reined it back a lot over the years. It's more carry on style humor now. Um, but still, most of the corporate companies I work for will never admit that they booked me um, because I am that evil um, performer, apparently. Well, they all love me. It's the same as Bernard Manning. Christ, Bernard Manning used to do shows for some, he'd do shows for the police, he'd do shows for uh, e equality companies that were for equal rights for people, yeah. you know? For people that you think shouldn't be having anything to do Is with Is he still Bernard alive, Manning. Bernard Manning? No. No, he passed, uh, he passed quite a few years ago now. I mean, and boy, he, you know, he he, he he was apparently labelled the racist. He wasn't racist. He took the piss out of everybody mm -hmm. equally, threw it in himself. Um, but you've got to be different, simple as. And you know what? There's only one thing worse than people slagging you off. I'm not talking about you at all. Sure. Well, I, I want to talk with you one, one last one last thing, and this is for, for 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 the people for the benefit of the people that are watching as well, because I'd love to hear what what other people's thoughts are um, on this. Um, Alex has obviously worked on on you know a, a lot of TV shows uh, and things like that. And I mean, we, behind the scenes. Oh, sorry. I mean, sorry. Ideas, of, ideas of mine. I'm not not just on screen, but the stuff uh, ideas of mine from the DVDs, the objective productions, mm -hmm. we made Derek's early shows. Uh, they used practically in every episode of Raja and the Evil Hypnotist that was on Channel 4 with stuff from my No Such Thing as Hypnosis DVDs. Mm -hmm. uh, and Darren's, um, was it Trick of the Mind shows? I think it might have been Trick of the Mind shows, but it was a total eclipse routine. And the concept for that, turning the person's watch back under hypnosis, so they think they've lost it or not, it comes from my No Such Thing as Hypnosis uh, DVDs, which was actually um, confirmed in front of a group of people at Blackpool Magic Convention a number of years ago. Um, where I was boasting about this in front of people and didn't realise one of the people stood there because I'd never seen him with a beard at the time was Andy Nyman and this gentleman who I didn't recognise as Andy Nyman went, that's not strictly true is it? I am aware that Objective Productions have used ideas from your shows on Raj and the Well, it's not really true that they've used ideas in Darren's shows, is it? Um, and I insisted, well yeah well, look at no such thing as hypnosis I talk about but in the watch back, well, they hypnotised and all that. And in the end, he went, well, yeah, I suppose you could definitely, I suppose you could, I suppose you could say, he reluctantly accepted, I suppose you could say, it was inspired by that. And then I left the group, made me excuses, and I walked off, and I went back to my missus and um, my mate of mine, Stuart Harrison Cassells, and they went, oh, what were you talking to Andy Nyman about? I didn't know it was Andy. I didn't realise he'd run a bit. And you know what that showed? It proves it's always a good idea to be telling the truth because you never know who you stood with. Uh, that's, that's very true. So on, on a wee final thought here, um, I just wanted uh, to share with both Alex and the viewers uh, mm -hmm. uh, an idea for, for a, a show that I'm, I'm uh, going to be working on very, very soon. Now, I don't make shows for television. This clearly is not a show that would be commercially successful. But... I you couldn't be successful. Let me just say, television these days, people need to think bigger. You no, no, I'll, 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 I'll explain why this this could not possibly be commercially successful in a second it's kind of has a very limited audience um, but the audience would be um, magicians really um, and uh, magicians of of like the World Magic Network and stuff like that um, in particular now um one of the one of the things that has sort of been taken off in popularity recently has been virtual reality headsets, and a lot of people get these things like the Oculus Quest. There's a PlayStation VR. Um, there's the HTC Vive. There's all these different it's, it, it, Oculus Go and all these different ones. Uh, and currently, the, 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 the kind of one that seems to be the most popular at the minute um, is the Ocul Oculus Quest Two, which is the one I have. And I meet up. Um, on an app called V Time XR, almost nightly, with a few magicians, and we put the headsets on, and it sort of transports you into a virtual world where you can socialise and hang out with your friends as if they're there. It's quite mental. 
You know, you feel like you're in. You feel Hang like. On a minute. Virtual world, like your friends are almost there, and he's virtual. So I mean, you could pretend to be anyone you want. You, you create. You, you create your world. avatar. For example. It sounds like the Musking at Blackpool Magic Convention. It pretty much is, it, but yeah. the, the, the thing the thing is, you you put the headset on, you load up the app within the within the headset, and when you move, uh, or or when you talk, your 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 arms gesture, your character gestures, when in, in the virtual world, if you look uh-huh. left, if you you see see, think you can look all around you, and for all intents and purposes, you're in this virtual world, and you can communicate. Like, so we we've been doing this on a nightly basis. There's Michael Samuels, Liam a. Black, a few other a few other people that you probably know. We come onto this uh, this thing on a nightly basis. There's a virtual pub. You can literally put the headset on and you can be sitting in a pub. You can take the headset off and actually sit with a drink if you want. You know, put it back on. So, uh, it, it's it is really awesome. It's amazing. It's called VTime XR. It's a free app, um, and it's available. You can get it for your phones and then put it in one of those virtual virtual headsets um but it, it's it's a, it's a free app but one of the, the the things is um we thought about doing a virtual reality show for magicians really and he was a concept of the show we were originally going to do it as an eight-part series and the idea being is i take people who are not magicians teach them a series of tricks you know, maybe a wee bit of variety stuff, and then we take them out on location, and they get to perform for for lay people. Maybe we're going to have to consider the whole COVID situation, so we'd have to do like maybe a public park or something like that. But one of the one of the things was we've all we've all seen these kind of things before, like David Blaine street magic. You know, where people are performing for people in in the the the, the street. That seems so long ago now. <laughs> Um, but but anyway, the idea of this, of this show is when you put the headset on, rather than watch the show, you'll be there, on location, watching me teach these guys, you know, the tricks. So so when you put the headset on, you would be, for all intents and purposes, you would be in my living room, you know? And you can see all around you in my living room. You can see all the stuff around you as if you're there. If you look down, you'll see the coffee table. If you look up, you'll see the, the ceiling. You know, um, if you look to the right, you'll see the door. You'll see the cat walking about. It literally would, would make you feel as if you're there. Now, we were originally going to do like a, a series of magic tutorials and stuff like that. But for the sake of, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not quite sure if that's the right thing to do because we're exposing magic. Do we keep this public? Do we keep it private? Well, you know, my first thought is um, there's a there's a very good reason why certain television show formats are not put out on television live. They're filmed in advance and then edited, and yeah. that's because a large amounts of it are incredibly fucking boring. Yeah. Um, and, and large amounts of what you've just described would fall into the ad where are the watch paint dry category. I, I, I the think so. Will be edited out. If it was ever being done for a real TV show, so the idea of being yeah. there virtually when it happens, a lot of it's going to be boring. Well, to, 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 to me, well, the, the, that's why you want to highlights. Channel Four did it, faking it, sure, they did it. Um, the guy that runs the magic convention in Scotland, Kevin Quanton, oh, yeah. he was the owner of the faking it show on yeah. Channel Four years back. So, um, but it, it would be kind of like, fake, but, but. Um, it, in, in some ways, it kind of would be like faking it, um, you know, in, in, in terms of that. But it, it's not going to be like a, you know, they're not up against a panel or something like that. But how I've seen the final show going, right? Cutting out all the tutorials. We would um, go to a public park, probably somewhere nice, you know, way, uh, you know, nice scenery. So when people put on the headset, oh, they're in a beautiful public park. And they can look around and see the see that sort of stuff, and they would see these people who have been taught magic by myself getting to perform for the first time, and they would do two or three tricks each or something along those lines. But the but the viewer who's wearing the headset would literally feel as if they're there watching the stuff rather than watching it on the TV. It, it's a weird concept to grasp until you've actually had a shot of one of these headsets. Um, so so there would be that that would be the first scene, right? So, and that, that's essentially the bulk of it. It would then cut back to the, the World of Magic Network studio where we would have a TV screen 
and we would have a face-to-face -face call with some magicians who will have already watched the performances and they'll then, they'll then chip in with their feedback, their thoughts, what they could, what could change, what could, you know. So there'll be a wee sort of discussion thing after it as well about the performances and stuff like that. So that's, that's, that's what I was thinking about doing. I think it could be entertaining, but very selective audience. It's, it's for magicians, really, and uh, and also people that are, you know, and have a VR headset. You know, very f few people at this stage although, uh, have them, although they are getting very, very popular. It would work in 2D as well, and you can get like, the app and on, on the phone and you see the video and you can sort of swipe to move left and right and up and down yeah. so you can point but it's crap compared to compared to actually having the headset on because the stuff would um, stick out of you it, it feels like you can touch and grab the stuff it's mental has any um tv producer in the conventional sense would probably say to you yeah i can see potential but you know what come back with a 50, you know, a 10-15 minute proof of concept. Yeah. It's, it's not a TV thing. It'll be a YouTube, it'll be on YouTube yeah. VR. Um, do, do a one-off 15, and then you know what you're getting. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking Minds group, focus group. Let mm. some people see it. You're invited to give the feedback on it, how, it, how the show could work better or not, and then make your series and well, I'm I'm going to be I'm going to be as I say, people watching this 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 the John King TV show is going to be almost every day, you know, I, and I'm just going to go live when regardless of what I do, whether I because uh, I'm this is live. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cut in because we're getting to 22. I'm going to have to leave my house in the next few minutes to go because I'm booked okay, in. So I um, need to be clean. So can I just say thank you for having me on? Excellent. A wee Being final thought from Alex. Different. If people are slagging you off, they're either jealous, vindictive, uh, got nothing better off, better off going on in their life. Only take notice of the slagging off if it's someone you actually respect. Who are, but there again, you don't have to like the person. If that person's actually got genuine, tangible talent in the areas that you desire to be good in, and even if you don't like them, the experiences they've had could be, be very useful to you getting where you want. Stop wasting time slagging people off or, or trying to copy emulate other people. Be the best possible you you can be. Because there's only one you when you do things for yourself differently. Break the mold. So people want to book you, not a magician, not a hypnotist, not a mind reader. Create your own brand. That's the thought I'll leave you with. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to come on the, the show, Alex. Hopefully we'll get you on a, a, again at some point. Um, I'm now going to put it on the World Magic Championships and I'm going to say uh, goodbye to Alex for the time being uh, hope you enjoyed yourself coming on the show take care Alex bye for now okay so okay so anyway thank you uh, thanks once again to Alex for, for coming on the show we're now going to put on the World Magic Championships now um and this is this is a show I'm really quite proud of. Uh, it was a lot of work with the video editing and uh, things like that to try and make it. Um, it's kind of uh, there's a lot of in jokes there for magicians there. So if you are a magician watching this, uh, you know you'll you'll probably understand what we're talking about. But for lay people, I think lay people watching this, it, it probably comes across almost like a genuine show at least initially you know and it kind of progressively gets crazier and crazier as the <laughs> as the the show progresses but it's one of the the, the, the most awesome things that that uh, that i've ever did i, I really uh, i really quite like the show and the the sort of the, the story that's told throughout the show um is pretty cool we spent a lot of money making this as well you know there's a um some pretty cool stuff so anyway it is now time for the World Magic Championships. I hope you all enjoy it. So here we go. So here we are with the World Magic Championships. I'm John King and I'm president of the World Magic Network. In 2015, we hosted the World Magic Network Awards where elite magicians from across the world competed for various 
Magic related titles. The show was a tremendous success, but one question was left unanswered. That question remains unanswered to this day. It's a question that all magicians across the world want to know the answer to, but it's never been answered officially. That question is, who is the world's greatest magician? But first, let me ask you, how do you measure greatness in a field? A World Cup? An Academy Award? A gold medal? Almost all entertainment forms have some kind of world championship to compete for. A prestigious token used to represent the pinnacle of greatness in that respective field. Many magicians could potentially claim that they were the best magician in the world at one point or another. Harry Houdini, Paul Daniels, Di Vernon, Elliot Bibby, David Blaine. What's common with these greats is none of them can claim they were ever the world magic champion because within the art of magic, such a prize has never existed. There are high profile reality TV shows that include competing magicians but these never really determine who is the world's greatest magician. Typically the winners of such shows are chosen based on votes from a muggle TV audience. Sometimes they're judged on whether or not the magician fools a judge, or sometimes they're rigged in favour of who gives the show organiser the best blowjob. But regardless, the winner of such shows can never truly claim that they are the world magic champion. The best we have to compete for are local and international magic competitions. But these focus on individual areas such as best stage act, best trick, rather than something prestigious and all-encompassing as the title of world magic champion. Ultimately, the prizes awarded by any kind of magic competition is, let's be fair, shite. At best, winners receive a generic trinket with a glued on engraved plate that says, best close up magician, or some nasty looking cheap ass trophy that's been passed down from smelly old man to smelly old man. A prestigious award deserves a prestigious trophy to match. In summary, no prestigious world championship exists for the current world's greatest magician. Well, that changes now. As part of our second World Magic Network Awards, World Magic Network will unveil the official World Magic Championship, the ultimate prize for any magician. The title will be given to the greatest magician in the world. A man or a woman so magical Harry Potter would be envious. And unlike your crappy magic club trophies, the World Magic Championship is being represented by a prize fit for a king. We have commissioned a beautiful, prestigious, custom championship belt, inspired by one of the greatest belt designs of all time, that we will reveal very soon. The winner of which will be able to legitimately proclaim they are the greatest magician of them all. So. Who is the world's greatest magician? Is it Jay Sankey for his numerous magic trick creations? Is it Yuri Geller for his spoon bending? Is it Drew McAdam for his incredible mind reading? Is it Jeff McBride for his amazing mask magic? Is it Mario Alegria for his array of stunning magic tricks? Or is it someone else? Is it you? Well, enough said. It's time to find out who is the World Magic Champion? Good evening, my name is Jack Sharp and welcome to the 2021 World Magic Network Awards. Today is a very, very special day because coming up we present some very special awards to some very, very special magicians. Our main event this evening is the presentation of the first ever World Magic Championship. A glorious championship belt and £5,000 prize money for the greatest living magician in the entire world. Our team of experts have evaluated and judged over 1,400 of the very best magicians from across the world in order to determine which man or woman is worthy of the title of World Magic Champion. But 
Before we give out some awards, let's firstly run through a selection of some of the nominees for the World Magic Championship. First of all, we have Shin Lim, winner of America's Got Talent. Next we have perhaps the most commercially successful magician of all time. It's David Copperfield. We have Lance Button, the legendary stage magician who performed his show in Las Vegas for over three decades. Well known for his mask magic, it's Jeff McBride. Now we have perhaps the most famous magic double act in the world, it's Penn and Teller. Our next nominee popularized street magic in the 90s and is also well known for his insane feats of endurance, it's David Blaine. And next we have a TV magician who is an undeniable hit with audiences, it's Dynamo. We also have Joshua J, the American magician of Full Penn and Teller on their hit TV show, Fool Us. Up next is Japan's premier TV magician, it's Cyril Takayama. Our next contender is international performer, Piff the Magic Dragon. We also have the amazing Jonathan, a magician whose entire act revolves around him being coked out of his tits on stage. Up next is a comedy magician and not a burger, it's Matt King. We also have the world's biggest bender, spoon bender that is, it's Uri Geller. Up next is the popular TV mentalist, Darren Brown. Then next is the best magician to come out of Wales since Tommy Cooper, it's Lance Bowen. And finally, we have a TV magician, it's Chris Angel. But more nominees will be revealed very, very soon. But first, now it's time for our first award, and it's time for the best spoon bender. And the winner, without question, is Drew McAdam. Congratulations, Drew. Let's hear from Drew. I would like to demonstrate how I won this award and what it is I do that entitles me to this wonderful award. Um, the spoons uh, are, are bent um, by the power of the mind. And let me demonstrate exactly how that's done. I take a straight spoon um, and I place it into my pocket. I concentrate, I make a magical pass. And I bring out the spoon and you'll notice that it's bent. What perhaps you didn't notice is that the other one is bent as well. So thank you for the award. I deserve it. Well, that really was fantastic. Congratulations, Drew. Up next, we have the award for the fastest escape artist. The winner is, it's Carl Derome. Let's see what Carl has to say. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Oh, hell. What is going on here? Hello. Okay, it seems like Carl is having issues. So let's go back to John King, who is now going to show you what we're all here for. Here is the unveiling of the official World Magic Championship belt. Hi guys, um, I'm very, very excited because inside this briefcase right in front of me is the official World Magic Championship belt. I'm absolutely stoked to see what this actually looks like. I'm sure you are as well. There's also the £5,000 prize inside here as well, which we are giving out to the first ever World Magic Champion and I'm going to have a sneak peek. Uh, so let's have a let's have a wee look. This is so exciting, you know. Wow. Now that is one hell of a championship belt. That's pretty cool. The money is secondary. You know, there is, I mean obviously there's here's the money here as well. There is a five thousand pounds that's going to be given out to one lucky and very talented magician. But this belt is a is a sight to behold and um, I'm really looking forward to being the, the one to present it.
Well, that was absolutely fantastic. What an amazing prize. Let's have a quick rundown of some more nominees that have made it to the finals. First up, we have the most annoying magician in the world. It's Peter Pinecone. We have Elliot Bibby, the international magician who performs all over the world via Zoom. Up next is a super popular magician who reveals more magic for YouTube views than anyone else. It's Justin Flom. All the way from Estonia, wherever that is, we have Carly Kouris. We also have one of the UK's top performers. It's Matthew Garrett. One of the best magicians in England. It's Tom Magic. Up next is three-time Scottish Magic Champion. It's Big Paul, Paul McAteer. You might catch him busking in the streets of Blackpool. It's the legendary Big Mo, Paul Moran. Up next, we have my personal pick. It's Joshua Logan. Pretty sure he is the man to look out for. If ridiculous beards is your thing, you'll love Roy Bond. We also have World Magic Network admin and magical guru, Andy Smith. If magic with tigers is your thing, it's Siegfried and... I have no idea how the next magician got a nominee, but up next we have the greatest magical jabroni of them all. It's Stephen Blair. Next on the list, we have the hottest name in magic. It's Brian Ovens. See what I did there? Famous for making hundreds of old grannies disappear, we have Dr. Harold Shipman. And last, but certainly not least, it's the man who is to magic tricks what Penguin Biscuits are to jokes. It's Jay Sankey. What a fantastic lineup. And we still have one last group of nominees to come. But now it's time for our next award. This award is for the Stage Hypnotist International Thought Reader Extraordinaire, or S-H-I-T-E. And the winner is Alex William Smock. Hello there, World Magic Network. How are you doing? It's Alex William Smoth here, better known to many of you as Jonathan Royale. And you know, the first thing I get a sense of, please don't be too amazed by this, but I'm getting a sense a lot of you, you've done a lot less shows in the past year. Yeah, in fact, I'm getting a sense of a thing. Quite a number of financial problems for a few of you out there, but not for me, because obviously I am the best hypnotist and thought leader, and that's why I was delighted when this was delivered today. And no doubt it will be the Spam Award again, a uh, winner of that in the past. Is the fastest escape artist, Carl Derome, has managed to get out of his box, and we're now going to hear from him. Thank you. I accept your award from the World Magic Network for the world's fastest escape in history. Thank you very much. Well done. Bye bye. Thank you. One magician who has been at the forefront of online entertainment has been given recognition as the most magical magician. And here he is, the most magical magician, Greg Chalou. Thank you, Jack Shot, for the most magical magician award. Remember, magic is... Well, did anyone have any doubt? Greg Chalou truly is the warrior of magic. Up next, we have the Richard Bellas Award for the best children's magician. This magician has been touching up, uh, sorry, touching the lives of children all over the world. And the winner is, is Danger Wank Dave. Congratulations, Dave. And now to present the award, we're going over live to our correspondent, William Fitter Divot. Hello, I am William Fitter Divot. And today we are at Magic Fortress. 
we will be presenting the award for the greatest children's magician. Let's check in. Yeah, what's up? Let's just sneak in. Is he dead? Is he dead? I think he's dead. <laughs> cut the film. Cut the film. Just cut it out. Okay, it looks like Danger Wank Dave has had one Danger Wank too many and has actually killed himself this time. So he is unable to accept the award. But never mind. I hope you've enjoyed the show so far. It's now time to take a commercial break. But stay right where you are because we will be right back with more fantastic awards and the reveal of the World Magic Champion. Stay tuned. I'm Carl Derome, and I'm going to try and bring out a brand new effect for sale in Blackpool for next year. You've all heard of the torn and restored newspaper. Okay, whoa, what the hell? Whoa, hell fire. I think it's going to be ready for Blackpool very, very soon. Oh, shit. It's going to be on all the dealer stands. And if you want to buy it, I'm the creator of heat. And I've got to be honest with you, you're not going to get much more heat than that, are you? That is what you call fucking heat. Are you tired of looking after your kids but don't care about childcare standards? Well, why not drop them off at Bella's Daycare? You've heard of Daddy Daycare? Well, this is Call Me Daddy Daycare. Bella's Daycare is ran by an award-winning magician, star of Penn and Teller Fuller's This Morning and To Catch a Predator. We look after your kids and pay extra special attention to the hot ones. Drop into our centre today. Well, it's been a bloody good programme so far. I wonder who's going to be the World Magic Champion. There's quite a lot of good magicians out there. Oh, shite. <sighs> Michael Shabble's a fucking creepy bastard. Fuck him. Ah, well. Fucking hell, who's that at the door? Ah, fuck, I'm checking my fucking doorbell camera. Fucking hell, I'm even going to answer that. Fuck it, I'm going to go make a cup of tea. Can I be a good wee cup of tea? There we go. Oh, hey, Shadow, don't really fucking spill my tea. I'm working with these really creepy pills for black food. That's creepy. You want to put a creepy pill, son? You can make me even more creepier. And now I am. You want to put a piece on? Ah, sure, honey. I'm going to have another one. Let's, let's go. Here we go. Hi. Here you come, Samuel. Here you come. Thank you. Come on, let me see, Sam. Come on, let me see. Here you go, sir. Oh, well, the show's been quite good so far, son. You do for me that. Oh, cheers, man. I've been watching it, but there's no creepy magician award, I was. Because mine, they won it back oh, 2015. Oh, you years ago, son. That was a bloody good award. You worked hard at that. Aye. Uh, the show's quite good. They put it on the new, actually, so. <coughs> <coughs> this cake is funny, man. <coughs> you alright, son? Samuel, if you're out, look up, son. Look up. Shite with killed the bastard. Look up. Good evening, my name is Jack Sharp, and today is a very, very special day. (laughs) 
Welcome back to the World Magic Network Awards. If you've just joined us, I'm your host, Jack Sharp. And coming up, we have a few more awards, followed by a main event, the crowning of the World Magic Champion. But first, the next award goes to the magician who did the most gigs in the last year. And the winner is... It, it, it's a draw, with every magician in the world tying in first place with zero gigs. It just so happens last year was 2020, which kind of fucked up that award. Okay, never mind. Our next award is for the best disappearance trick. And the winner, who is going to demonstrate his Derek Lever special, is Naked Martin. Hi, thank you Jack Sharp and all the magicians at the World Magic Network for the best vanishing trick award. As you can see, I have made my clothes disappear. I'm really looking forward to seeing the reveal of the World Magic Championship, but before that, let me share a Derek Lever special. Well, the next award goes to the magician with the very best website. The winner is Roy Brownlow, also known as Roy Stone. Congratulations, Roy. We're now going to take a look at that marvel of website design right now. As you can see, what a gorgeous website this is. It has a lovely animated background, really nice color scheme. It has a glorious video. Let's have a look at the video. Absolutely fantastic. You can see Roy performing a trick where it looks like he's making a, a, a wow, it's a rabbit up here from nowhere. Okay, let's scroll down a little bit more. Some really nice pictures. Some great font choices. A nice white bar. Truly is a work of art. And now, because we all know that black magicians matter, we have a very special award that I have personally presented a few days ago to the best black magician in the entire world. So let's play that footage for you now. Good evening, my name is Jack Sharp and today is a very, very special day because I'm here to present the award for the blackest magician in the entire world. No, Jack, an important correction. I'm the best black magician in the world. Is that not what I just said? I'm here to present the award for the world's greatest black magician. Now, there are many, many great black magicians throughout the world. I'm a fan of many of them, including uh, um, many of them. However, here is the greatest of them all. It's Bob Smith. Hi. Where's your, where's your props? I've got some props. Because I'm here to present the award for the best black magician in the entire world and here he is it's bob smith hi bob how are you doing hi i'm good i'm good fantastic and how long have you been a magician for a very long time i'm the best in the world at the moment absolutely fantastic okay that is the greatest black magician and now we're going back to the studio i hope you've all enjoyed this this is the greatest black magician in the world well, that was absolutely fantastic. And now coming up, we have the award for the greatest magical ventriloquist. The winner is, it's Crispy T. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. Uh, just let me speak. I'd like to thank you all very much. What for? for? I'd like to thank you all very, very much for voting for me to be the world's greatest ventriloquist. That's a lot of bollocks. And and I'd like to thank you all very, very... <laughs> Hang on, wait a sec, I've got an idea. <laughs> Try again. Hello there. Uh, I'd like to thank you all very, very much for voting for me. <laughs> Your glasses are steaming up now. I'd like to say thank you very much for the prizes and all the things that I'm going to get. The uh, PlayStation 5 and I'm going to get the... You can't see my lips moving, can you? No, I can't. It's... <laughs> That's how good I am. Thanks very much. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you all again. Our next award is for the 2021 Ninja of Magic. And the winner is, it's Mario Alegria, 
Congratulations, Mario. Hello, Ma World Magic Network. How are we doing? I'd like to thank John King and WMN for this award. And I know for sure I'm back. I'm back, Jack. So all you cocksuckers out there, start doing magic. You got it? And I love you. Take care. These are hard times, but we can get through it. With our humor and with our love, we can overcome anything. And may the force be with you, always. Well, we only have one last award to give out, and that is the ultimate prize in magic, the World Magic Championship. And along with that, £5,000 cash prize. Let's have a quick rundown of the final nominees. First up, we have the greatest escape artist in the world, Carl Durham. Then we have World Magic Network President, John King. Buki's favorite to win is it's Alex William Smoth. Up next is the winner of the Best Disappearance Award, Naked Martin. The next nominee is the blackest magician in the world, Bob Smith. We also have the winner of the Best Magical Ventriloquist Award, it's Crispy T. Next on the list is the most magical magician, Greg Chalou. The Ninja of Magic 2021 is up next, it's Mario Alegria. The winner of the Richard Bellas Award for Outstanding Children's Entertainment is the recently deceased Danger Wank Dave. The winner of the Best Spoonbender Award is up next, it's Drew McAdam. The only magician who wears a top hat and a cape to sleep is Liam A. Black. The magician with the best website is next, it's Roy Brownlow. Penn and Teller might not have caught him, but the police did, it's Richard Bellas. Up next is everyone's favourite vegan magician, it's James Brewster. Perhaps one of the only magicians who can truly claim to do real magic, it's Santa Claus. And last, but not least, to be a great magician, you have to be able to keep secrets. And one man managed to keep secrets better than anyone else, it's Jimmy Savile. And that brings us to the end of our list of nominees. Yoda, E.T. and Alan Morrison didn't make the cut, but they did make the short list. It's nearly time for our main event, but before that, we have some words for some magicians who are going to say a few words as to why they think they deserve to win the World Magic Championship. Hi, thanks for nominating me for the, for the World Magic Championship prize. I deserve to win this because I've been studying magic since the pandemic has started. I really, really, really want to win the World Magic Championship. Really want to win. And I'm not a magician. I'm a mentalist, which is a kind of magic. And I really want to win because my mummy, my mummy, would be so proud. I, I, I haven't an incentive, a carrot. I have money, lots of money, and got an envelope. And if we've got, if we've got a carrot, we need a stick to make sure I win. And this, this is my stick. So to make sure that I win, I just want to say... <coughs> I just blew one of my nuts clean off. Alex William Smoth here, better known to many of you as Jonathan Royale. And the reason I believe I should be the winner of the World Magic Network uh, World Champion Belt is quite simply because all you other jabberonis are quite simply bedroom amateur wannabes who do the odd 
piffling gig in the so-called real world using stuff that's not commercial. How many of you have actually ever had over 200 television appearances worldwide? How many of you have appeared on the front page of The Sun, News of the World, USA Today even featured with celebrities like Robert De Niro and Billy Crystal? None of you, quite simply, because none of you have got a single ounce of the talent that I've got in my little finger. And that's why I should win the belt. My name is Michael Samuels, and I've just come from Old Grab's house, and I'm a bit pissed off. Because not only have my creepy magician pills worn off, but I have none left. And there's no award for a creepy magician this year. I've not even been nominated for World Magic Champion. I should be the World Magic Champion, hands down. Let's be fair. Who's going to beat me? We all know that every magician is a fucking loser. Drew McCarthy isn't going to beat me. That idiot fucking shot one of his nuts off with a gun, trying to bribe his way to win the award. What a grade A jabroni. <laughs> Carl de Rome isn't going to win. I saw his advert for Heat too. It's got to be one of the worst tricks ever. Well, apart, ap apart from Heat 1, which even Derek Lever says, should be banned for using dangerous chemicals. That shit isn't even anywhere near ready for release this year. Or any year, to be honest with you. And I see you guys gave an award to Greg Chalou. Greg fucking Chalou! <laughs> By his own admission, he's only been studying magic since the start of the pandemic. He still doesn't know anything Greg Chalou, you are a fucking piece of shit jabroni. And who else is going to defeat me? Mario Alegria? Roy Bond? James Brewster? Nah, none of them are in my league. Jeff McFucking Bride even got a nomination. And yet he only stands out because he was one of the only magicians who wore a mask. Well, guess what, pal? COVID-19 happened, and now every cunt has a mask. Get to the back of the queue, you fucking jabroni. And what about the lack of black magician nominees? How racist are you guys? Clearly, you just got Jack Sharp to pull some random black guy off the street and give him an award just to check boxes and appear politically correct. It's bullshit, and I can see right through that crap. And there are no awards for any woman either. Nah, this award show is sexist and racist. Like, what the actual fuck is going on here? What happened to Ruby McClunge? What happened to black magicians like... Uh, shit. That's not important. I'm actually so worked up, I can't even fucking think. I cleaned up at the last awards. I was the official world's creepiest magician. But what happened to the Creepiest Magician Award this time around? You deliberately didn't include it just to hold me back so that you selfish cunts can keep all the awards to yourselves. Half the awards on this are just stupid anyway. You just make up fucking awards. A Richard Bellard's Award? <laughs> really? Half the cunts on this are not even magicians. <laughs> the bottom line is, you guys are all shite. And you should just cut to the chase and give me my belt and give me my five grand. This is the creepiest magician, not of 2021, but of all time, signing off. Back to you, Jack. But now is the time you've all been waiting for. It's now over to John King in the World Magic Network studio, who's going to reveal for the first time the World Magic Champion. Thank you, Jack Sharp. I guess now is the time to reveal what we've all been waiting for, the World Magic Champion. Since we first announced we were going to introduce a World Magic Championship, many magicians have expressed their concern over how fairly a winner could possibly be determined. I mean, how do you decide who truly is worthy of being crowned the World Magic Champion? Well, to answer that for you, we are a team of experts who spent a great deal of time evaluating over 1,400 magicians 
individually. It was a long and difficult process that our team judged magicians based on numerous factors, including showmanship, originality, technical skill, likability, um, and various other attributes. And after many hours of debate, our team also decided exactly how we could apply different weights to these attributes um, and how that can vary situationally. For example, in most cases, I'm sure you would agree that a magician's technical uh, skill level is a more important factor than, uh, say, a magician's appearance. However, if a magician were to neglect their appearance so much, that could actually be an overriding factor because no matter how great the magician's skill level is, an audience is not going to pay attention to a morbidly obese, smelly, waistcoat-wearing magician who's covered in tattoos from head to toe of playing card pips. So anyway, we have narrowed the selection down to a handful of top magicians and it's now time to determine the winner in the fairest possible way. A prize draw. So I have here an ordinary everyday bag and I'm going to zip that up at the bottom and I have here also some cards and each one of these cards has the name of a magician like, like Jay Sankey, Shin Lim, Mario Alegria, etc. And I'm going to drop them into the bag like that. I'm going to pull one out here at random. And the winner is me, John King. I'm trying to appear humble here, but let's be honest, I'm not. I deserve it. After all, I'm far and away the best magician in the world. And not just because obviously I have the best magical skills, but because my contributions to the world of magic are beyond compare. I'm the founder of World Magic Network, where thousands of magicians collaborate and discuss their craft on a daily basis. Thanks to me, magicians are able to communicate and share magical ideas in ways never before possible. I created the Conjurers Convention series, which is the greatest magic convention blog movie series in history. Not only has it entertained thousands of magicians from all over the world, but it's been used as a platform for magicians to become recognized and promote their magic businesses. Even the show and the, co and the entire concept of the World Magic Championship was my idea in the first place. I mean, people have been performing magic for longer than all of recorded history, but nobody except for me thought to create a proper championship for it. You know, I'm the only magician in the magic community who actually does things that need to be done, while the rest of you jabronis just sit about all day, munching on your junk food, and jerking off to the latest magic trick, waiting on your phone to ring so that you can land your first gig. Well, the fact of the matter is that I'm the reason you're all here. I am your hero. I'm better than all other magicians in history. I'm the best magician alive today. And I'm the best magician there ever will be. And now I'm the official world magic champion. But you know something? Despite all my hard work and effort for the magic community, you magicians don't appreciate it. You've turned World Magic Network into a place to complain about politics and all the other shit that's going on in the world. Well, let me point something out to you. The politicians of this world that you worship they don't care about you. They're not your hero. I am. They don't care about magic or magicians. In fact, they're doing all they can to destroy us. Need I remind you that it was politicians that put the world into lockdown. They restricted and shut down, you know, almost all the places magicians can work. They banned live performances. They took away your income and they put you out of business. They imprisoned you in your own home. They've effectively put a stranglehold and all magicians and the magic industry. Oh, and what's the excuse did they give? Oh yeah, the existence of a silly little virus from a meat market in China. Well, maybe if you and the rest of the world went vegan and stopped eating corpses of innocent animal victims, then you wouldn't need to worry about the supposed threat of silly little viruses from animal exploitation industries. But even though this virus has over a 99% survival rate, you'll still socially distance. You still wear silly little masks and you'll still line up in droves to be vaccinated because you're terrified and you're stupid enough to believe the politicians have your best interests 
Uh, well, the political farce called COVID-19 is far from over. Whoa. And as your world magic champion... Who is it? Man, the door's on, and you come. Oh, Christ. Oh. Have I got some great news for you, old grab? Right, so you're looking pleased with yourself, son. What's been happening? Well, I went up to the World Magic Network studios to kick up a fuss about not getting the Kiki Magician Award. The front door is lying wide open, and I walk straight in. Nobody seems to see me, and even Jack Sharp doesn't pay me any attention. Went to one of the one of the studios and just sitting there on a table was this inviting me to take it. So I'm thinking, old grab, we go a holiday. Jesus Christ, son! How much is all that? Five thousand pounds. Fucking hell! Uh, that's unbelievable, son. That's cool. I can what we'll do with this money. Here, follow me, I'll show you. Here you son, through here. Through here. What the fuck did you just do? It was counterfeit, son. Shite money. Magician's props. I had the money if it was real. No, it was push. It was fucking. It was, it was counterfeit, son. I fucking noticed it was shite. Come on, back through. I felt real about it. Just a fucking stupid magician. It was a magician's it was fucking that. prop, son. A fucking load of push, you know? It was a. Uh, it was fucked the money. It was, it was plastic. All money is plastic these days. Uh, so, since when? Uh, three or four years ago. Fucking. The winner of the prestigious competition was none other than the president and founder of World Magic Network, John King. Despite many magicians complaining that the competition was rigged, John received the World Magic Championship belt and was due to receive a £5,000 cash prize. However, it has been reported that the cash prize was stolen by a man believed to be Michael Samuels. Police are on the lookout for Michael Samuels, who is described as being short, with dark hair and looking creepy as fuck. If you have any information on the whereabouts of this creepy bastard, then contact your local police station immediately. Well guys, that was the World Magic Championship. <laughs> I hope you've all enjoyed it. It was all about fun, a bit of a laugh. Uh, and uh, that brings us to the end of the show. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, once again, big thanks to Alex William Smith for uh, the interview. And if you're a magician and you want to come on the show, feel free to uh, send me a message, drop me a wee, uh, a wee link, that kind of thing. And uh, we'll be doing this virtually every day, you know. There's uh, and um, so once again, thanks for joining us, and bye for now, guys. <laughs>